Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the week 10 edition of the Plays and Fades. If you watched the video last week, you're welcome for T.Y. Hilton. If you didn't play T.Y. Hilton, I guess DFS is not for you. Let's get right into it with the quarterback I like this week, Dak Prescott. Zeke's suspension has been upheld. He's going to serve his six games starting with this week. So they're going to have to rely a lot on Dak Prescott. The Atlanta Falcons are 24th in DVOA against the pass. I think this is a game where we're going to see the true value of Dak Prescott. He's going to have to throw the ball especially with Matt Ryan and the boys on the other side. I think it's a get right spot for Atlanta. Dallas might be playing from behind. Fire up deck. Next up, back to the well with El Guapo. Since CJ Beathard became the quarterback, he's getting 21% of the market share. Carlos Hyde has seen a minimum of nine targets per game. There's many ways to beat the Giants. One of the primary ways is with the running back. Carlos Hyde at 6,700 is the ultimate bargain. Next up, another running back I like, Melvin Gordon. First of all, Highly recommended from my boy Josh. If you've listened to the podcast, he is the Mel Gold Whisperer. Upon further research, I realized that one of the ways to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars is not through the air, but on the ground. According to DVOA, the Jacksonville Jaguars are 31st against the run. Sure, they have phenomenal corners on the outside. That's why they're a run funnel defense. Fire up Melvin Gordon at a discount. We were playing him at 8,500. Now he's close to 7K. Going with these two running backs in your lineup lets you open up a lot of space in the rest of your construction. Next up, the wide receiver I love this week. Plug him in right away. AJ Green. The Tennessee Titans are the 28th ranked team at defending number one wide receivers. They've given up the third most fantasy points to number one wide receivers. Andy Dalton and AJ Green, surprisingly, play better on the road than they do at home. I could see a monster game coming from AJ Green against that secondary in Tennessee. Similar to Melvin Gordon, this is another guy we're getting on a super, super big discount. Next up, another wide receiver I love this week and on a discount, Sterling Shepard. I'm gonna keep it simple. The San Francisco 49ers defense is atrocious. So is the Giants. What does that mean? shootout potential. Sterling Shepard is the only wide receiver on the Giants right now healthy. He came back first week last week, full participation at practice, saw nine targets. If it wasn't for him dropping a pass that would have been a 75-yard touchdown, at his price, you're talking about one of the most popular wide receivers on the board. This week, we're getting him at a discount, and I see a monster game from Sterling Shepard. 5,700 on FanDuel is the ultimate bargain. We're going to pay up at tight end, and that's something nobody likes to do. We're going with the party animal, Rob Gronkowski. Let's go back a couple weeks. Denver, Monday Night Football. Who came into town? Travis Kelsey lit them up. The way to beat Denver is through the tight end. They have great corners on the outside, but they're weak against the tight end position. Gronk has been an absolute Bronco bust to the last couple of years against Denver. On average, his last six games against Denver, 88 yards and a touchdown. Sign me up. Also, in DFS, people don't like paying for the tight end. Why would you pay 8,500 for Gronk when you could pay 8,000 for Julio Jones? Give me Gronk, safer floor, especially at less ownership. Last but not least, before you laughed, We've been running pretty hot on the defenses. Hope this trend continues. Let's fire up the Chicago Bears. I've been able to identify a couple things in DFS. Sometimes the prices on DraftKings and FanDuel don't make sense. On DraftKings, they're 3,000, mid-tier. On FanDuel, 4,300. They're the fourth cheapest defense on FanDuel, and I don't understand why. Coming off a of bye week, playing at home, where they've shut down both Atlanta and Pittsburgh. Now they get Brett Hundley and the Packers coming in on short rest. The Bears are a six point favorite at home. I think there's tremendous value here and they might go under look. And for 4,300, if I could get 10 points out of my defense, sign me up. Let's move on over to the fade section this week. Starting off with the quarterback, Drew Brees. Follow the prices here. Perfect pivot off Drew Brees, come to Dak Prescott. Brees might throw two touchdowns, which is cool, but over $8,000 on FanDuel, you need more than that in a big tournament. Also, going into Buffalo, this has the feeling of a trap game for the Saints. They've rattled off six straight wins, and now they're going into the Ralph, where Buffalo is undefeated this year. And also, what do we know about dome teams? When they go outdoors, they play a little different. I think this is a trap game for the Saints, and it could get ugly. I'm staying away from Drew Brees. Pivot on over to Dak Prescott. Next up, the running back I like and dislike this week, Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is 9,400 on FanDuel. In a big tournament, you need about 25 points minimum if you're paying that much at that salary. Le'Veon Bell could have 150 yards and two touchdowns. That's not enough value for what you're paying for at this price. Also, if you go with Le'Veon Bell, it's going to be tight to find some value. Pittsburgh is coming off a bye, and it does set up well for Le'Veon Bell to have a monster game. But you're going to need something around 250 yards and three touchdowns to take down one of these big tournaments. Next up, the wide receivers. I am not playing the rest of the year. Jordy. Devontae Adams. 
Randall Cobb. What do you see here? Packer wide receivers. Used to always be featured on the play sections. No Aaron Rodgers. Not in my lineup. If you compare their prices from the beginning of the year till now, you see how drastic of a change it is from Aaron Rodgers to Brett Hundley, especially in DFS. I'm just not rostering anybody. And look, I'm a fan of the Bears defense, so it doesn't make sense to play a wide receiver against the defense you're starting. Next up, the tight end. I'm staying away from this week. Jordan Reed. Once again on the fade section. Look, this guy, it's the same shit every week. Limited, hobbled, shoulder, ankle, knee. Too much nonsense. Kirk Cousins seems to find everybody but him and Terrell Pryor. I'd rather pivot elsewhere like Austin Safari and Jenkins. Revenge game against his old team? Why not? Last but not least, the defense we're fading, the Tampa Bay Bucks. Tampa Bay Bucks are priced around the 4,500, pretty much minimum salary on FanDuel. Some people might see the Jets and they might want to go to the Bucks. They just have a pretty good offense. And I know we're not used to saying that, but just be careful. The Bears cost less than the Bucks, and I'm all in on the Bears this week. So there you have it, the plays and fades for week 10. If you want to hear more about DFS, Degeneration Bets is a podcast. Every Friday, we put out a DFS episode. Check it out, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Catch you next week.